There were so many myths surrounding women's sports and women's running in particular. If you did anything arduous, you risk getting big legs, grow hair on your chest, and your uterus would fall out. These were scary myths, and as preposterous as they sound today, they kept many, many women from participating in sports and even now keep women from participating fully in life. When I got to the Boston Marathon, it was a sleety, cold, and rainy day. And so from a distance, obviously, the officials couldn't tell that I was a woman. It was actually at about a mile and a half. The press truck came by us taking pictures. Then all of a sudden jumped the race director. And he jumped off of the bus and ran down the street after me and grabbed me by the shoulders and threw me back and grabbed at the front of my sweatshirt and tried to pull off my bib number. And he screamed at me, get the hell out of my race and give me those numbers. And my coach yelled at him, leave her alone, she's okay, I've trained her. And he just smacked my coach out of the way and he went back after me. He was just out of control. And I tried to get away from him, but he had me by the sweatshirt. And my boyfriend, who was running alongside, he threw a shoulder charge into the official and sent him out of the race, boom, right flying through the air. But it was a very, very traumatic moment for me because I was only 20, running my first race, and I didn't want to upset anybody, I just wanted to run. So my coach just said, run like hell. Down the street we went, as fast as we could go. And the press truck then got very aggressive with us. The journalists on it were shouting at me, you know, what are you trying to prove? Are you a suffragette? Are you a crusader? And I just put my head down and said, I've got to finish this race no matter what. Because I knew if I didn't finish it, everybody would believe women couldn't do it. Everybody would say, oh, women are always barging into places where they're not welcome and they can't do it anyway. And by the time I got to mile 21, finally the anger just disappeared and I realized it wasn't the official's fault. He was just a product of his time, He's just an ignorant man. What the important thing is, is where are the women and why aren't they here? And I knew that they weren't there because they were afraid and they never had the opportunity to disprove something that would make them feel fearless. So it was going to be my responsibility so by the time I finished the race, I felt great. I felt like I had discovered a new universe. It wasn't until that night, in fact, there were all these newspapers on the newspaper rack and the front and back covers were just covered with the pictures of this incident. We had no idea that it was gonna be a big deal, but I just kind of was quiet and I thought, oh boy, you know, now, now it begins. It was a photograph that went around the world and it became one of Time Life's 100 photos that changed the world and has in fact become a social revolution. I'm Catherine Switzer and this is The Female Lead.